We're going to finish this chapter, and I just want to remind us before we read the text that Paul is still in an attitude of prayer. We're, we're going to be looking at chapter 3, especially verses 20 and 21. If I could ask each and every one of you to stand, if you're physically able, so we can read the Word of God uh, to get our whole context here. I'm going to start back at verse 14, where we studied last week, and then we'll pick it up at verse 20. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Lord, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of His glory, He may grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and height, and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to Him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, may You teach us through this text why we can never say, I can't. And I ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Four reasons why you can't say, I can't. What could they be? This, this, this is a wonderful, wonderful text for this. Where's um, my intro? That's okay. Here we go. <clears throat> it was about three years ago that I'm working in this stinky smelly manhole and it's November Cheryl and the kids live here in Kansas I'm still back home and it's cold and it's rainy and here I am in this dirty dingy manhole and has it ever happened to you that when you're so busy doing something and the last thing you need is for the phone to ring? And I've got my cell phone in my pocket of my coveralls here because when you go down in a man... I know many of you have been down in manholes, right? When you go down into a manhole the signal doesn't quite work as good as it should. So instead of it being on my hip, I always put it in my, the front pocket of my coveralls so the signal would come through the top of the uh, manhole. Well, the phone starts going off like this. Now, where am I getting calls? I'm getting calls from Kansas here, and it's not from my gorgeous wife. I'm getting calls from the AT&T management here in Kansas because I have put my transfer in to get down here. And uh, the phone is, is just going off and they're asking me questions. And they said, well, we've got an engineering job uh, opening in uh, Salina. And I said, well, you know what? Well, I could s- certainly drive there. But you'd, but you'd spend most of your time in Dodge City. And I went, well, now see, I, I know where Dodge City is now, but back then I said, no, you know what, you know, where is that compared to Wichita? Well, it's quite a ways away. I said, well, that's not really going to uh, work. So anyway, we were going back and forth, and San Antonio's calling. San Antonio is the headquarters for AT&T, and they're calling me back and forth. 
and I'm getting fed up because this phone keeps going up and I'm, and my hands are filthy and I'm filthy and all of a sudden it rings again and it's a and it's a pastor. <sighs> yes sir, and it's a number that I don't know. Hi, this is Pastor so and so from such and such church uh is this Pastor Jim Toll from uh, Grace Church in Crown Point, Indiana? Yeah, mm-hmm. this is him. Well, uh, Dr. Vanderweer is, um, I can't seem to get a hold of him. No, no, you can't. He's teaching overseas right now. Then you're just the guy that I need to talk to. I said, okay, well, what can I do for you, Pastor? And underneath my breath, I'm going, why are you bothering me now? So he says, you know what? I need, to, I, uh, I need your help today. Oh. And here I am in this. I says, well, what can I do for you? Well, I've got this 18-year-old girl that uh, I'd like for you to talk to. Now, the, my first thoughts of, you're her pastor. Why, you know, why don't you talk to her? We, well, and see, he says, because I know you and Dr. Vanderweer uh, do uh, counseling, b- biblical counseling. So I said, sure. Okay, but I'm not going to get off of work till." 3.30, and would you like for me to come to your church to set a time? He says, yeah, he says, 5 o'clock. I said, okay, okay. Then I go back down into this man, and this whole time when all these calls are coming in, it's like I'm half in and half out of the manhole. I'm hanging on a ladder trying to talk and get a signal. And so I go there at 5 o'clock, sit down with this 18-year-old girl, and I said, so tell me, uh, tell me what's going on. And she says, well, I'm, I'm just... I'm here to tell you that I have a disease and I can't change. And you're not going to take me off my meds. And I said, well, how do you do? My name is Pastor Toll. What's your name? <laughs> and she says, well I, well, I just want to tell you that I can't. I know there are things going on in my life that I just can't change. And you're not going to take me off my meds. Well, tell me what's going on in your life. Well, I've been diagnosed as bipolar. You know what they, uh, uh, they use the term bipolar now is what they used to use terms years ago as manic depressive. So I said, okay, well, tell me your background. Oh, well, my dad's a pastor. Oh, no. Okay. All right. So you're 18 years old. Do you live at home? No. Uh, um, I live at my fiance's house. Oh, okay. So how's your relationship with your parents? Well, not good because I've, um, I ran away twice. And then when I was 17, because we, we couldn't get along. I just couldn't get along with, with my parents, with my siblings, nobody. And then the doctor diagnosed me as bipolar. So that's my problem, and I can't change, and you're not going to take me off my meds. I said, oh, well, I'm not here to take you off. So I said, so you don't get along with your family. Nope, don't get along with any of them. But that's because I'm bipolar. I said, oh, okay, so where do you live now? I live with my fiancé's parents. Okay, how do you get along with them? Oh, we get along great. What's wrong with that picture? You can't get along with your parents. You're telling me you're bipolar, but you can sure get along with your fiancé's family. One and one ain't coming out the two. But you're not going to change me. You're not going to take me off my meds. I said, okay, okay. Well, let's, let me ask you some questions. So I asked her some questions. So I said, well, this is the type of counseling that I do. Strictly, strictly biblical counseling. I don't go into psychology. You know, I didn't even go into the bipolar thing with her. And I said, but it's up to you. If God can change you. Did you know that God is still in the life-changing business? Did you know that? Okay. Well, if you don't know, you will after I'm done. So anyway, she says, oh, well, okay, you know what? I would really like to do this. So I said, okay, then you need to go home and then call me to make an appointment. Your pastor can't call me. 
your future mother-in-law can't call me. You have to call me. And she never did. She never did. I lovingly confronted her because she kept on telling me, I can't. I, I just can't do this. When she talked about the relationship with her family, I says, how, can you, how come you can't get along with your family? I just can't. We're, we're always going like this. And the doctor said, it'd be, we're going like this because I'm bipolar. Oh, okay, okay, great. But you can get along with your family. Oh, yeah, we, we get along great. So where does the disease kick in? Only when you're at home? Remember, Paul is still in an attitude of prayer here. Right? He's still, because as we read from verse 14, he picks up the prayer where he left off. And he says, I bow my knees, praying for you. Praying that... that that, that God would grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your heart. That you would be rooted and grounded in love. And then he starts to end this. He says, now to Him who is able to do far... You know what? Don't tell me you can't. Don't tell me. Four reasons why you can't say you can't. Number one, reason number one, because God is able to do the things you think are impossible. Because God is able to do the things, the things you think are impossible. On your notes there, I put the hostility. Think about this. It's staying within our context here. The hostility between the Jews and the Gentiles is gone? No! No, 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 no. No! You, you're going to mean to tell me that it's gone? Well, yeah! How? Christ! Christ took that wall of hostility down. All because of what Jesus did. And... You know what? This ain't natural. This ain't natural. And here we sit in our, not that it's a bad thing, but here we sit in our lily white church, and, and if there was one of my black friends sitting here, the natural thing for me is to dislike him because he's black. Now remember, remember how I've shared with you where I was brought up. Never, ever, ever bring one of them home. Don't you dare. You know? But the hostility between the Jews is broken down. It's gone. You know what? It ain't that. Because the first starts out here in verse 20. He says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. All because of Christ Jesus? This ain't natural because a natural thing, you know what's natural for us? To hate. That's the sinful, natural, depraved man that we are. The natural thing is to hate. But these people have come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. That hostility is, is just broken down. So, no, so the reason number one why you can't say you can't, because God is able, from my text, He is able to do the things you think are impossible. Because if you don't believe that, you end up, look at your notes, you end up believing a lie. That you can't change. Can I tell you what the lie is? And he said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? You know how, it, how, how easy it is for us to believe a lie? 
From, from the beginning, man turned from God's counsel to follow Satan's counsel. Adam tried to achieve independence from God. But do you realize we were made to be dependent on Him? Satan put that doubt when he questioned God's Word and God's plan. And the church as a whole has been deceived by Satan's counsel. Man has turned from God to Satan's counsel. So you end up believing a lie. Because if there's things, because if there's something going on in your life that you're saying to yourself right now, I can't do it. I don't know. My text is saying something different. Why? Because that wall of hostility has been broken down. These, Paul is praying that they would love each other. What? You mean to tell me that I have to love that black friend of mine as a brother in Christ? Yes. You bet. And when, and be, because the love that he's praying for surpasses all knowledge. All knowledge. So, reason number one, why you can't say you can't is because God is able to do the things you think are impossible. And there is no middle ground. There's either compromise or conflict. Satan is the one who says you can't. You can't change. Reason number two, because God is able to do beyond your expectations. Because God is able to do beyond your expectations. Gentiles, Jews, one body, fellow heirs, you mean to tell me I have to be in heaven, in this house that we learned about, that Jesus Christ is the cornerstone? You, you mean to tell me I have to be in heaven with these guys? You're joking me. Yeah, you bet. Paul's praying. You know what? Love each other. Serve each other. You bet. Yeah. Reason number two why you can't say you can't is because God, according to our text, is to do, He is able to do beyond your expectations. How much grace do you need for whatever you're dealing in your life right now? Because I can look around this room here, and I bet you in each and every heart here, there's something in your heart that, that you are dealing with that you are trying to convince yourself you can't. But the text is teaching us because he's praying for these people. He's praying now to him who is able. You know what, Paul? Think about this. He is not saying now to him who hopefully is able. Man, you know what? I'm praying. You know what? You know, could be. Maybe. No, he ain't saying that. He says now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. So you think about this. Can these Jews and Gentiles function together? Can they love one another with God? Yes. His activity is beyond any of our expectations. How much grace do you need? How much? How much grace do you need to overcome that, that thought, that lie that says you can't? Because chapter 1, verse 7 says, what does He do? He lavishes it on us. Grace, the power, desire, ability to do the will of God. How much mercy? Chapter 2, verse 4. You know... When you were, de- you know how dead you were? Which side was dead? You guys were dead, weren't you? You guys were dead. You guys were alive. Aren't you glad? This side was dead. 
How much mercy does He have? Because when, de- when you were dead, He made you alive. When you were dead in, in your trespasses and sin. So tell me, when you say you can't, you know what? There are some of you sitting here saying, Dad, I can't because God just doesn't have enough mercy for what I've done. I don't believe it. Because God is able to do beyond your expectations. He's rich in mercy even when you were dead. Reason number three. God is able to do far more than all you ask. And... And this is so cool. Look at this. Now to Him who is able to do far more abundantly than some that we ask or think. Now to Him who is able to do far more abundantly than a few things that we ask or think. I'm struggling here with this. My Bible says, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all. That we ask or think. Reason number three, because God is able to do far more than all you ask. He does not fit the limitations of your expectations. How many times how many times do we put God in a box? You know how big he is? God is big. He's bigger than anything that you're dealing with. You know how old he is? God is old. God's been around a long time. And and he knows he, d- he does not fit the limitations of your expectations. Because the text says, He is able to do all. Man, there's glory in that. And I sit there sometimes, and I think, I put on your notes here, all means all. How do you pray? Think about this. How do we pray? You know what? Do we pray, Lord, you know what? Oh, you, you, you can... Do, I I know you are able to to do far more abundantly than all. Well, maybe. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Is this too? You know? Can I tell you? Can I ask you this? How? Don't raise your hands when when I ask this. How many people pray with their fingers crossed? How? How many people pray with their fingers crossed, hoping, hoping that he'll maybe answer it or get around to it? Is the attitude of your heart really open to say, you know what, I can? How how many of us pray to the point is, Lord, uh, I asked you to do this, but if if it hurts too much, then no. Do you pray that it won't cost too much? Come on, now. how do you pray? Do you pray just hoping? Oh, you know, I said he is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. One of my professors made this statement. Your prayer life has died when you, when you pray with no expectancy. Think about that. Your prayer life has died when you pray with no expectancy. Never ever, I've, I've never ever forgotten that. God, you know what? what? 
Whatever difficulties you are going through in your life right now, that some of you, if not all of you, are saying, I can't. God is using the difficulty in your life right now to prepare you for His work. He uses those things to prepare us. So don't tell me you can't. It doesn't teach that. Reason number four. Because God is able to do far more than all you imagine. All you think. Reason number three was about all you ask. Reason number four is about all that than you imagine. How you think. How? How does He do that? The power, because in verse 21 it says, the power that is already at work. According to the power that is at work within us, to Him be the glory in the church in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. So how can you say you can't? Think, think about this. How can any of us say we can't? Because the text is teaching something completely different. Not by your strength, by our wisdom, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. Do we really believe in the resources we have? Do they exist? Can I use them? You know what the problem is? The problem is not with God. The problem is with us. He has already given us all we need to love Him and to love others. Because remember now, in this prayer, He is praying for these believers to know the height, depth, width, everything there is that surpasses all knowledge about the love of God. That's the only way that they're going to be able to serve each other the people that they previously hated was by love. God's glory is to be manifested in the church. Because it says there in verse 21, to Him be be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. So be it. A true believer can change. And the example that we've learned up until this point is that, the, it, that what we've learned from the Jews and the Gentiles should be enough. I do believe, based on this text, that you can change. I do believe that based on this text, if there's something in your life that you're saying, I can't do it, i got news for you. My Bible says... You can. Why? Because he's, He is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask and think. And I do believe with all my heart that the church as a whole can change. Too many churches say, Can't do it. I don't know. My text says, I can. Through the power of the Holy Spirit that is already... Now, it's... Is it coming? Nah. It's already in. It's already at work. So please, 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 think about this. Four reasons why you can't say, I can't. Because God is able to do the things you think are impossible. Because God is able to do beyond your expectations. Because God is able to do far more than all we ask. And because God is able to do far more than all you imagine. Ladies and gentlemen, for each and every believer here in Jesus Christ, 
with the Holy Spirit that, uh, that already indwells us, there is no reason why we have to say, I can't. No reason. Why? Because the Word of God says you can. Let's pray. Father in heaven, help us here. Help each and every heart here know these reasons, whatever they're struggling with in their life. Lord, there, there are people here, sitting here today, that are caught in sin. And, and they're probably in that pit so far that they're thinking there is no way I can't stop. I can't get out of this. Father, speak to their hearts right now. Please. And in, in a very special way. If you're sitting here thinking that, that you can't, that you can't change, I know somebody who can change you. And His name is Jesus Christ. And His Word teaches that when we come to the point in our lives when we make a commitment and ask Him to forgiveness and ask Him to come and live in our hearts, something supernatural happens. And He takes up residence inside of us and changes us so we can no longer say, I can't. And through the power of His Spirit, man, God is still changing people and changing churches from saying, I can't, to I can. Because all things are possible. All means all. And that's all it means. Father, we love You. Speak to each and every heart here. Lord, help us to know that Your Word is true. There is no doubt. It is not a lie. And when we are tempted to say, I can't, may Your Spirit prompt us and remind us that we can. And I ask these things in Your name. Amen.